thing that I thought about the other day ago about about making this picture, and I'm tired of this happening. You know, this is the most frustrating part of of our career careers is to say that the experience of making the movie was more profitable than the film was. You know, and that's good for for us as individuals. But you know, I don't know how long we can go 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 on making films that don't make a shitload of money in the in the business and and um, and still work. You know. Um, Thankfully, the critics were really nice to, to this film, but in the end of the day, like I said, the experience was more profitable than the film, and um, the experience of making this film has haunted me every day, you know, since, unlike the other films, the experience of being in Europe, um, and that vibe out there, and the experience of working with those actors, you know. We were there for eight months, and I gotta say that, you know, probably one of the most liberating experiences of my life, you know, and eye-opening, and just even the the work there and the work with those actors and technicians and how professional they are. And then when you get to jump over to Amsterdam or, you know, London or whatever and just just see Europe, you know, and and, um, and be away from, you know, I know we, we, we kind of got a reputation of bitching about Hollywood and whatever, but there are a lot of evil, evil, leechy, fucked up people in this business. And, you know, the days that, you know, I go, I just want to go own a gas station and, Amsterdam or something, you know, and, and just, you know, you forget that you can actually just leave this town and whatever, because I'm, over the years, you know, just been disgusted in the, the type of people that exist in this town, and, and um, you know, but we've, we've kind of got a reputation now talking too much shit and being too bitter about it, whatever, but whatever. Went to Europe and made this film, and I think what the, 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 the best thing that came from it personally was to go, you know what, fuck them, you know. There, there is another way, you know. If we want to come out here and 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 lead lead a life and even make films, you know, in, in other countries, small films, and not have to deal with these assholes, and and um, um, you know, this is, happens to be the only business you don't have to have any credentials. So of course, there'd be a lot of crazy, fucked up, leechy individuals in this business. So, but Europe was was a way of like, you know, it's kind of like a reawakening in a way. Like some people find religion, we found found Europe. You know, I don't know. It's one of those things where. Um, it, it took like four or five years to do, and um, and then you put something out after that that long, and you know we got a good critical response, and oh, we had the number one movie for a week, and I still slip into a deep, you know, deep deep depression, you know, for about two months. I'm just not getting out of it, you know, and it, it has more to do with like having nothing to do now, you know, like the work came to an end. Um, I look at the movie now, and I'm surprised at how satisfied I am with everything because last year and this time I was editing and I didn't like anything about the movie you know there was not one scene I can point to that I said I had any feeling towards or liked in any way and what me and our brother would do is uh, take turns uh, editing the movie he'd have one month and then I'd have one month my month was December his month was November and then January was the month that we combined forces basically like so uh, November he, he goes through and does his pass of the acting December, I go through and do my passive camera moves and technically what I think is right. And I was so depressed back then, because usually in editing we do get depressed, that I hacked the movie to pieces. I cut everything out. I like The movie got, I mean, he, the movie was like in, uh, two hours and 40 minutes when it got to me, and I hacked it down to 2.11 within like two weeks. You know, um, just because I was merciless, like I just didn't like anything. Cut that out, cut this out, cut that out. And when you're in that kind of frame of mind where you're depressed and you don't like anything, you just, like, try to cut out all the, like I said, I was, like, telling him I was cutting out all the lesions and sores and cancers and what I considered cancers at the time. And then and then as you started editing more and more and you have, uh, you know, me and him in the editing room, we start bouncing off each other in the editor, the movie starts to take shape. And we usually always say it takes shape on its own because um, certain scenes tell you what to do with other scenes. So the movie tells you almost where to go. And so the movie really started shaping up, and I started liking certain things. Effect shots started coming in, and then and then and then we uh, had a wish list for reshoots and pickups because a lot of things we weren't able to get while we were doing the movie, and we were able to go to uh, London and get these things, and it was really exciting. It was probably the happiest time of my life. This four month period where we went and reshot and came back and edited, uh, where I was completely satisfied with a, a lot of things I wasn't satisfied with before. Um, and I know I look back on it and I'm really proud of it, you know, in a lot of ways, especially because it's not something that people expected from us, and that's one of the main reasons why we did it. Um, 
but then there's a there's a painful side of it too. Um, there's a lot of pain from the editing, you know, that usually goes on um, that I really can't get over. You know how how painful it was last year to edit this movie, how painful it was uh, after the movie's released. Also to see how um, you know how major studios uh, um, deal with uh, business. Basically, you know, it's number one the first week. Um, they circle their wagons and pull all the all the um, ad campaigns. Uh, the second week the movie's out, and they have a number one movie, but they stop showing commercials. They shop because there's some guy in the um, account department that says, "There's no way this movie's gonna make as much money as we thought it was gonna make." So let's pull all the money while we have to so cut our losses. And you start to see the business side of how studios work. You know, this is the first time we work with a major studio, so we had a great relationship with with Fox, and we'll make another movie with them again. But we learned a really hard lesson. Like you know, it's all about the dollar and. If, if they don't see it's making the money they think it should make, even though the movie's number one that weekend, they're going to pull all the advertising for the second weekend, you know. And so that was really painful, you know. But uh, I don't know. It's like one of those things right now where I really don't think about this movie anymore. You know, I don't. I have a lot of good memories from making it and from researching it, but it's, it's a hard thing. It's harder than our, our last movie and the movie before because we spent so much time on it. And for it all to come to an end one day, all the phone calls stop from post-production people, all the effects meetings stop, all the editing stops, all the looking at um, things in the theater stops, all the talking to studio execs stop. It just stops completely, and you have no life anymore. There's no work. And I go into hibernation mode where I, I sleep 12 hours a day and wake up, eat one meal, go back to sleep for two months straight, you know. And there's nothing anymore. It's almost like there's no life because the hard thing with me and my brother is I think he has a hobby more so than I do. He likes to fish or he likes to do certain things. The, the dilemma I'm in right now is that my hobby is what I do, and there's nothing else out there for me. There's no, you know, hiking or snowboarding or going on fishing trips or traveling. It's making movies. So when the movie's not here and we don't have another movie, it's dead, dead time. And it, you know, it's hibernation time basically until we get another movie. And pretty much depression, you know, a major depression sits in that I just now got out of that it's hard to snap out of. It's really hard to, you know, move on because for five years, this has been my life. I don't know where we'll eventually go as filmmakers, and I don't know eventually, uh, you know, what we'll end up, like I said, but I don't, and I also don't know, I think about it, I go, what, you know, you ask yourself, well, who are you making films for? Are you making it for yourself? Are you making it to, to make money? Are you making it, you know, have, have we made the film, you know, whatever, and what are we trying to do? And I just think that through, through this experience, you, we haven't quite done what we want to do yet, you know. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I think fantasy or su surreal a surreal um, environment is more, I'm more interested in, you know. Not fantasy like, you know, Lord of the Rings or whatever, but, you know, like, um, um, I remember back in Dead Presence we did an interview and uh, Russell Simmons pulled me aside and he goes, I know what you're trying to say, but people don't need to hear that, man. They don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And I, we we're talking about um, uh, not wanting to tell linear stories and fuck storytelling and, you know, this, that, and the other. And he's like, yeah, I know what you're saying, but don't say that in public, basically, because people just don't get that in a three-act structure. And and I was, when we were in Europe and we were, you know, kind of just hanging out one day, I, it finally came to me. I go, you know what? Eventually it'd be great to be known as a, as a journey teller, not a storyteller, you know, and I said, that's, you know, kind of, in, at the end of the day, and that's kind of what Europe did for me, too, I go, you know what, you you know, a lot of films, European films, too, they're journeys, you know, and, and a lot of the music out there is a journey, it's not, it's not a story, per se, you know, and, and I said, you know, I, to myself, I said, that's kind of the, the word I came up with, if we can take people on a journey, at the end of the day, they feel like they've, they've been and seen things they haven't seen before, Whatever that is, you know, then you know we be that that be that be good for me at the end of the day, you know. But this whole three act structure and having to whatever, I don't know. Like it, we had to do it in this film, we did it in our last film, whatever, and the documentary somewhat. But I'm not really into it, you know. I'm not I'm not really into it because it's just so. There's no way you can do it without falling into all the cliches and. You know, and, and leaning on this and leaning on that. And you eventually always have to lean on those same crutches. Whereas you watch, like, something like a... And this is extreme. I don't know if we'd ever go this far, but Mulholland Drive or Lost Highway, Dave, David Lynch, is like... 
he's not leaning on anything traditional there, and, and sometimes it really pisses you off. You go, what the fuck is going on here, you know? But he's breaking some ground there, you know, and doing something different and trying something different. And that, that would be interesting to ultimately maybe even take street stories and things like that that we're known for doing and, and giving it that kind of touch and untraditional touch and a journey flavor, and more surreal flavor with the aesthetically um, realistic feel, you know. And um, I'm rambling on now because I just hit the pipe. 